I feel like Cantonese food has a stereotype, whether it's abroad in China or even in Guangdong itself. Cantonese food is often synonyms with. Sulci is a more of a traditional Cantonese cooking restaurant. I feel like I'm in a jewelry store. It's absolutely stunning. We like to enhance the natural flavor of the ingredients. A bit less strong in terms of flavor, yes, more yes. delicate. Yeah. No other ingredient as yet very fragrant. Very simple. Very simple, very classic, but it's very flavorful. And it didn't come from nowhere. It sort of become this default fancy food, the odd cuisine of China, the go-to style on TV programs and Michelin stars. As much as I love my delicate dim sum, as a Cantonese myself, I couldn't help but think that the stereotype is a little disconnected from the everyday life of everyday people in Guangdong. So in this video, we want to show you what a normal BC person would cook in their own kitchen and how you can approach making a Cantonese meal wherever you live. Whether it's at home or at a restaurant though, as you probably already know, Cantonese meals, as most of China, are eaten family style. That is, with several smaller dishes than one larger main. A general rule of thumb is one dish per person plus rice. So two dishes for two people, four dishes for four people. And as a home cook, getting all that hot to the table and finish relatively at the same time, it's definitely a skill. In this video, we are not gonna be going chronologically though. So if you want some tips on how to pull that all off, do you check out our Chinese Mise on Plus video up here. And remember, if you ever feel overwhelmed, you can always just hop pot. If you ask 10 Cantonese people what's the most important part of a Cantonese home-cooked meal, probably 10 of them are gonna tell you soups. And we do love our soup. Growing up, my grandma's Sunday dinner will always uh, involve a relative intense one, and we'll get to that later. But after going around a little bit more, seeing how people from different places eat, I have to disagree. We would have some sort of soupy thing on the table for most meals, but not all of them. But what you have to have on every meal and every table is vegetable. A lot of vegetables cooked. Now, I know Western food also has salads and I love salads as well. But to me, that salad was never enough. Like this looks like a normal size side salad. But if you actually cook your salad greens, the vegetable quantity may strike you a little differently. <laughs> As a general rule of thumb, we would suggest try to aim for 250 grams of vegetable per adult uh, and about 150 grams uh, per kid. And generally speaking, there are three ways you will eat your vegetables. Uh, first, it's you blanch it and eat it straight, often with some oyster sauce. Or second, you can make it into a super, super simple quick soup. And we'll also get to that later. Or third, you can stir fry. Depending on the vegetable you are using though, you often want to face oil, which is giving it a quick pre-blanch. After blanching though, you don't have to go crazy with the ice bath or whatever, like some fancy restaurants. Just run your vegetable through some uh, running water to just quickly cool it down and set aside till you're ready to fry. So for our baby bok choy today, we'll simply just be frying it with some garlic and ginger. Now, in the US and some other places, I've seen people reaching for jars of pre-minced garlic because they don't like mincing. Okay, so if you are lazy, you can just try grabbing one clove of garlic and smash it to little bits. This way, the pills are easy to get rid of as well and aromatics will be sorted in no time. So let's fry that up. To a hot wok, toss in about one tablespoon oil. Here we're using lard because lard fried vegetables are awesome. Over a medium flame, go in with the garlic and ginger. Once those are fragrant, about 30 seconds, then up the flame to high and throw in some wine. 
Now, a quick aside. For Cantonese restaurants, the go-to cooking wine would usually be Shaoxing, aka the Shaoxing wine. Ah,、uh, but for Cantonese home kitchen, though, the go-to cooking wine would usually be the stuff. Ah,、uh, Mijiu, Mai Zhao rice wine. It sort of tastes like sake, but a little bit stronger, about thirty percent. And today we will be using this for the maximum authenticity bonus point. And of course, you can always just use Shaoxing or Liaojiu because those are both common choices as well. Okay, now back to our vegetables. Now give it a quick mix, then add in the pre-blanched vegetable, another quick mix, and then a swirl of soy sauce. Add in the final seasoning together with an optional slurry and out. Okay, so I said that Chinese food doesn't have a larger mean ah、uh, in the Western sense, but usually there will be one dish that's slightly more central, slightly more involved, and that would usually be the meat. Now, this is probably going to be the part that's most similar to restaurant cooking. And the、uh, three most common meats that you will see in Cantonese home kitchens are pork, fish, and chicken. And today we got ourselves a fish. Hosting fish, it's basically the most classic way to eat a fish in Guangdong. And there are lots of videos online、uh, show you how to make it. So today we want to do something a little different. We'll be doing yu yu liang si. One fish, two ways. This was one fish that we already got filleted at the market, and we'll be using the fillet in one dish and the bones and heads in another. And at restaurants, sometimes it will even go more intense. Like at some sashimi joints in Shandong, you will sometimes see one fish three, four, or even five ways. So this fish had about three hundred grams worth of fillet, and then we'll slice that into about half centimeter slices. Sprinkle over the white parts of four scallions, then we'll marinate that with a quarter teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon sugar, quarter teaspoon white pepper, half teaspoon of our mijiu rice wine, a half tablespoon of cornstarch, and about one tablespoon of peanut oil. Spread it out evenly. Steam on high for four minutes, and after that, we'll sprinkle over a half tablespoon soy sauce together with a good handful of scallion curls. Now, scallion curls are not difficult at all. You don't need any special equipment or anything. All you need to do just、uh, slice your scallion greens lengthwise as thin as you can possibly get, and if you got some bigger pieces, you can optionally tear it open, but Don't obsess with it. You don't have to get it perfect. And I know now they don't look curly at all. And here comes the magic trick: just toss them in some cool water for about ten minutes, and they will just curl right up. All right. So back to the fish. Ah,、uh, then in a wok, get two tablespoons of peanut oil until it's smoking hot. Then take it and drizzle it over your scallions. And now we've got ourselves a main. Lastly, soup. Now, again, if you ask most Cantonese people, like soup will be the most important component in a Cantonese meal because Guangdong has a soup culture that's both super vast and deep, which has a lot of crossover with traditional Chinese medicine as well. And soup in a meal is like a ritual. Ah,、uh, it's the first course of a meal, and you have to drink it before you eat everything else. So broadly speaking, there are two types of soups in Guangdong. Ah,、uh, there's the very famous lou fa lang tong that will take hours to make. Ah,、uh, it usually involves some sort of meat component with some other herbal or medicinal ingredients added to it, and then cooked together for at least at least. Two hours or even way longer. It's quite intense and not an everyday thing. 
But today we want to cover something much simpler and much quicker. It's guangtong that people would make on a daily basis. Even though guangtong is a simpler version of the Cantonese soups, ah,、uh, but it still has different levels of intensity. You can take ten to twenty minutes to make a base. With some sort of fish or dry seafood or curry meat, like lap ngap, it's a classic. Or you can just throw everything into your wok and call it a day. Here, let's show you how you can make a soup with a base first. Ah,、uh, fish is one of the most common choice for this kind of ah.、Uh, Quicker soup with a base and yu tao dao fu tong fish head with tofu. It's one classic combo. And today we'll be using both the head and the bones to make a quick fish、uh, milky stock. So to a、uh, wok, first go in with a tablespoons of oil, lard preferably, and over a high flame begin to fry the head and bones. Flip periodically, and once they begin to brown, after about two minutes, swirl in a tablespoon of mezhou or shaoxing wine. Then go in with some aromatics and fry those until fragrant, about thirty seconds. Now pour in five cups of hot boiled water from the kettle and bring that all up to a rapid boil. Turn the flame back slightly to about medium medium high to keep things at a rolling boil and cover. Fifteen minutes later, come back. Your soup should be good and milky at this point. You can really add whatever you want to this, but we toss in thirty grams of sliced carrot, let it boil for a minute, and then two hundred and fifty grams of luvu gourd, which, as an aside, we first peel it and cut it with the Chinese rolling cut into one inch pieces. Let that boil for another two minutes, then season, which will list on the top of the screen. And with that, you've got yourself a simple, tasty guangtong. Now, the fish soup that we just made will at least take you about twenty minutes. And next, I'm gonna show you how you can make something that can be done within five minutes. So this kind of soup will usually include some kind of protein,、uh, like pork slice or pork livers, or The most common, or there will be some kind of tofu, or there can be egg, be it fresh, salted, or sentry, and then you just toss in whatever vegetables that you have into it and bring it all to a boil, and that it's done. Something like ham dan gai choy tong or ba gua yuk pin tong all belong to this category. For us, let's use whatever we have in the kitchen and just boil it all together as it meant to be. So to a hot wok, add in one tablespoon peanut oil, heat on low, toss in a couple cloves of crushed garlic, fry it till it's slightly golden brown, then toss in one century egg that's cut into eight pieces. Fry it till it's slightly blister, about two minutes. And next, add in one hundred grams of napa cabbage. Turn the heat to high. Quick mix, then swirl in half tablespoon mezhou, aka Cantonese rice wine. Give it another quick mix. Add in three cups of hot water right after. Bring it to a boil. Cover and keep it boiling for two minutes. Then come back. Add in the seasoning, which is on top of the screen. Heat off. Finally, finish with a small handful of cilantro and out. And now your hong sai pei dan tong. It's also done. All within five minutes. Before we go, though, there's one more thing that we want to talk about. So besides eating around dishes, there's also some other stuff that can help you consume more rice. Especially back in the time when food was not abundant, rice was the major calorie intake. People would count on this kind of things to help them consume more rice. For this type of Cantonese songfan or rice killer stuff, a、uh, salted fish is probably the most classic item that I can think of. They are generally very salty and very fragrant or funky, if you like, and a little goes a long way. My favorite is the mushy type, mui hong ham yu. They are particularly soft and flavorful, almost close to a solidified fish sauce, if you can imagine. It's usually steamed in a small, tiny plate on top of rice with a little bit of ginger, julienne, or sometimes even pork belly. 
growing up, my family would always make a whole lot of rice if there's salted fish on the table, as we say. 今晚蒸咸鱼记得煮多啲饭。After salted fish, tossing a little bit of 腊肠或腊味 over your rice is probably another very classic thing to eat along with more rice. Now, 腊味 Cantonese cures sausage and meat was not a common sight during times with food shortage, but for us kids that grew up in the 80s and 90s. That was no longer the case, and lap mei became this thing that our parents would add in the rice to make us eat more rice. Now, the real poor people item、uh, to eat more rice is probably fu yu fermented tofu. So, fu yu itself is very flavorful and is widely used in many Cantonese dishes. And it is because it's very flavorful, it can help you eat a lot of rice. Growing up, me and my cousins, we always love having some fu yu with some white rice. But the adults would never let us have as much as we want. One main reason was that, ah,、uh, for our parents' generation, when they were younger, there was food shortage, as everybody knows. Um, and fu yu being one of the few available food items that you can eat with rice, that was. They're kind of only choice, and they need to eat a lot of them. So in their mind, eating a lot of fu yu with white rice all the time、uh, was associated with difficult times. So when there are more food items available on the table, fu yu become this kind of thing that will only appear once in a while on the table as a treat for us kids. With all that said, though, fu yu is probably my top five all-time favorite rice killer, especially when steaming it、uh, over rice with some sugar and some toasted sesame oil and turning it into almost a sauce consistency, and then mix it with some white rice. With that only, and、uh, together with some vegetables, it can just be a meal for me. All right. So as to how Cantonese home cooking differed from restaurants, we had a little discussion in our Substack post. If you're curious, do check it out. So right, recipes in the description box. And as always, a big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon, and of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos. 